You can't use your powers, Samantha. You can't. It's Adam Eve when I'm in costume. Adam Eve? Where'd you come up with that? Adam, because, duh. Eve, because it's my middle name. Cute. No, the cape is cute. The name is awesome. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about, of all things that just came out on Amazon Prime, Invincible Adam Eve. So that's what it's called. It's called the Ad- It's just called Adam Eve Special. And it's a one-off episode. And it just launched. They premiered it at San Diego Comic-Con th- this past weekend, recording right now July 25th. But they premiered it there and they released it on Amazon Prime that day as well. So everybody got a chance to to watch it, take it in. And we're not getting Invincible until November 3rd, everybody. So uh, it is at the end, pretty much end of the year, as we speculated, uh, Jamie and I, when we last talked about it a few times, mentioned this, and then we kept saying, when's it going to come out? When's it going to come out? We thought it was going to come out in the summer, but they pushed it back probably because they had to do more prep. And now with uh, all the strikes that are going out there with the WGA and SAG-AFTRA, well, this doesn't affect cartoons at this point because even the writers could still write. Apparently, Motu is uh, another one. Uh, Masters of the Universe is in current production and that's a completely I didn't realize that. yeah it's a completely different kind of union that they have and it's been around for years the only difference is with that with those uh those the union for cartoon writers is they don't get all the benefits or anything they literally just p- get paid for their material at the time they don't really pull much of any residuals at, if anything but I would expect more stuff coming out of Warner Brothers as far as DC content. Expect the X Men '97 to come out on Disney Plus, hopefully sooner than later, and uh, more content as far as when it comes to that. Uh, that you know that doesn't even affect voice acting, so that's a good thing. But in a sense, they don't really make as much as it would be for a regular movie. But we have a lot to look forward to as far as when. Uh, Invincible does come out to on November 3rd, but right now we're going to be covering the Adam Eve special. That is, uh, it's Invincible presents Adam Eve, and that's what it's called. The synopsis is, in this special prequel episode, Samantha Adam Eve Wilkins discovers her superpowers as a young girl and must come to terms with her own sinister origins as she discovers a family she never knew she had. That covers it. It covers it. it it's kind <laughs> of vague, not giving away anything much of the story itself. But I'm just glad that they came out with this, because this was a character that is of interest by a lot of viewers. Yeah. And it it's a female character and a female hero. We all know that Mark is smitten with her. <laughs> Rightfully so. And the person who actually voiced... Eve in the regular Invincible show is Gillian Jacobs. But in this particular version, it's actually Jaslyn Lone. We had to do a little bit younger of a voice, so that makes sense. Yeah, and she's 12. Uh, it says Eve age 12. So uh, I, I don't think she's 12 years old, but I think the actress is, uh, is a lot younger than Gillian Jacobs. And we see a lot of the original cast in the very beginning of the movie. Obviously, we see Omni-Man that is voiced by J.K. Simmons. We get Ross Marquand as Immortal and Aquarius. And it is also another tech voice. We finally get Phil Lamar as sidekick and also Salamander. A new addition, which is a new evil person that's out there with their battling in the very beginning. Tatiana Maslany as Queen Lizard. We have somebody new that we, I'm thinking he's new. I don't remember him from the first season, but Lance Reddick, who does the voice of Erickson. And I'm pretty sure he was in the first season as well, but this is his last uh, of anything. You know, know, we sadly lost him this past year. Uh, It was during the 
promotion for John Wick 4, which I actually did cover on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast with Kat. But yeah, and then we also have Carrie Payton playing Black Samson. He also did The Officer. He was also the Doctor's voice, the one that replaces uh, Brandy Worth and so many other people. With that, we're going to go right into our initial or overall thoughts of this particular episode. So, Jamie, what did you think of this special prequel episode? I loved it. I loved being back in this world. I had forgotten how good it was and how rich it was. Yeah. Obviously, I remembered the violence because that was hard to forget. But yeah. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed being back in this world, and I liked this story a lot. I thought this was a really cool story, and I, I liked it as a one-off, yeah. too. Like, it, it fits very well as a one-off. It was definitely a one-off, and it, it gave us an insight on Adam Eve, which we never got to know. We, she was always a girl of mystery, as I like to call her. She always kept a, a, like a, at arm's length with Mark at all times, I've noticed. And then she didn't really like to get too close. So I, I think with this shows a lot of where that comes from. And we do see the issues that she has with her parents, too, because even in the first season, we saw that with her parents. By then, they knew about her, about her powers in the first season. But in this particular prequel, we she hides it from them. So we don't get the exact truth of when her powers are shown to them. but. I really did enjoy this. I love the whole origin story, how she came to be very, very bloody at the very end of the episode, not in the very beginning. Uh, the very beginning was a very much a uh, something that I enjoyed is like her beginning of her birth and who helped her and what was going on. And then, you know, the whole switcheroo at the hospital spoilers. Yeah, she gets yeah. the baby swap gets there. But there's a whole turnaround at the very end of the episode that uh, I will point out, which I highlight. But I thought it was very well written, done very well. Uh, a lot of people would think, hey, this is boring in the very beginning. But you know what? I didn't think it was boring. A lot of a few people that I did speak to uh, who I know personally were just like, mm, uh, it didn't really grasp me. After the first 15, 20 minutes, I was just like, eh. I was like, hmm. got to give it some time. And when I watched it the second time, I really grew to really appreciate it because honestly, you want to see more of the hero aspect of it. And uh, of all things, too, there, there's something in there about Adam Eve herself that I like that I, I think Marvel probably stole from a little bit for a character called Miss Marvel. <laughs> not Captain Marvel, not Photon, Miss Marvel, the young girl that we got a Disney Plus uh, show from. But uh, I, I like the fact that she was using discs and stuff to step on and launch as she was learning her powers. I, I thought that was pretty cool. And it was reminiscent. I'm like, wow, that's Miss Marvel right there. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. It was like, you know, uh, to point out one of the things I really did enjoy is have her learning about her powers. And to me, that was uh, with her use of her first powers of her, like she's forcing herself to study and then she turns her, you know, whatever book, I think it was a mathematics book. And then she turns it to crystal and then she wished it to come back and it turns back. That uh, was awesome. And then uh, later on, you know, her mother hands her of all things, uh, a cream cheese and olive sandwich. I, I'm assuming that was not the first time that that was given to her. Yeah, but she said your mother says it's her favorite, but she winds up changing it to a hamburger, which is <laughs> the best use of her power in the entire show. Which kind of makes me question because uh, the doctor states that she wasn't able to convert anything organic. Like I guess it meant more about people and anything think, of that element. Living, I think living living tissue. tissue. So I, I guess, uh, you know, it, it's kind of dead tissue at that point. So yeah. she could easily change that. So I, I loved that point uh, of when they exposed that uh, the bubble gum, you know, regular bubble gum, you know, flavor to cinnamon flavored. Uh, but she shows Val and she gets scared. 
which costs her her friendship with Val because I really enjoyed that friendship that they had. Yeah, and, and was... it shows you how people are not, you know, uh, uh, not used to super powered people. So uh, it, it shows that issue of people who are just normal, and then which these, they yeah. they should be. They are. Because it's not like she was the first one. No, and I I, I guess. You know, this is you, you're talking suburban America, and they're not going to have somebody out there. It's well, not like I mean, yeah, the, it's not like the boys where they have uh, Compound V. But the, I mean, like the episode started with the Guardians of the Globe. Yeah, fighting yeah. the fighting the Lizard League. So it's not like it's not like they're not around. They, they are around. It's just that uh, it's not so prevalent in regular society, I guess. But. Uh, the the fact that they both their friendship started off of how you know she felt weird and strange and then she met Val and Val says well I'm your weird neighbor so we could be weird together so which was I've, adorable it was adorable and it was like oh once it was amazing and I was like oh great she has a good friend and then next thing you know, after that encounter, she kind of loses contact. She gets kicked out of her private school, which was for gifted kids because her grades, all she was interested in was in chemistry. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, if you can see molecules, that makes sense. It does. <laughs> uh, and and she, uh, I loved it for the fact the babysitter loved her for it. It's like, oh, she helped me. I'm going to pass my test. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, because yeah, you know, she basically knew the periodical uh, periodic table. Was able to convert all her Legos into different kinds of uh, molecules, or, or or what they are for what he needed for his test, and a good visual representation. So yeah, she was we, showing all the chemical bonds. Yeah, so you knew deep down inherently that was within her, and that was her gift, and you know how she was able to rattle it off. You know, it's like even the father says, the adopted father's like, she can't even read. So, <laughs> and she was a little kid at that time. He's such an ass. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it made me grow to hate him more throughout the episode. Yeah. And I, I could see why she's very distant with, like, even just with friends. And I, you could see that in, apparently through the fact of how she lost her friend Val. So yeah. I, I can understand her distancing herself from people and not getting too close, even though she does, you know, in the first season, we saw her trying to give like a handout to Mark and try to help him and what she what he was doing. But uh, did you have anything that you that you liked particularly within the episode that we didn't really speak of yet? Um, I mean. I liked when it kind of made me not laugh, but it showed the dad for who he, like they, they really developed the dad as an a-hole quickly. Oh. Like you start out feeling bad for this family because they've just lost their baby and they're crying. And then magically your baby woke up all by herself. She's all, she's great. <laughs> and I could, but I mean, like in that moment of horrible loss, I can see why you're, you'd take it. Because that's what you've just been sitting there praying and begging for was that your baby's okay. And yeah, hey, look, your baby's okay. Um, don't question it, just take the miracle, get it. And he seemed, and you know, even the growing up scenes, like where she was like a toddler and stuff, they showed him like he was a good guy. You know, he was both like it seemed like a happy childhood, which she was not going to get in that lab. Oh, hell no. And yeah. she was not, I mean, if this. If this didn't happen to her, she was not going to have this happy, what looked like a happy childhood. Like she seemed like a basic. But then when she started being weird, dad was like, mm -mm. Is it? Um, she's not weird. She's smart. Was that the quote? Yeah. Like, uh, what a jerk phrase. <laughs> yeah. There, there was a lot of uh, things. I actually have a few quotes from him. Uh, he goes, what's that name of that for school for weirdos? <laughs> yeah. Like, he just turns into this absolute jerk. Which, yeah. I, and I don't know, feels like you need for an origin story. But they did such a good job of quickly developing that 
in him without without bashing it over your head. Like, I feel like the way they did it was really, really well done. Yeah. Uh, what I liked about her character development in it and her portrayal, honestly, is that typical teen girl angst uh, that we get during the uh, the show or the episode of like, especially with the aunt from uh, the aunt's dress that she was given as a gift. And you yeah. can see the look and I could I could see that from a lot of girls perspective. It's like, oh, my God, I will never get. I won't be caught dead wearing this thing. And then she quickly changes it for <laughs> her own needs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's never been brought up again by the parents. <laughs> she just wears this top and jeans and, and sneakers and everything that she, she made out of the dress. And I thought that was pretty cool. But the, the fact also is that she still goes out there on her own she's rebelling up against her parents uh like staying in the treehouse with her friend Val that she, all day and was like oh i don't need to it's like you said only an uh you were only going to be an hour it was all day or her sneaking in at night and her mother catching her and it was after her first foray into testing her powers outside uh especially with the the guys who were trying to steal the dogs and uh the first encounter with uh with the doctor with dr brandyworth of all things too but yeah. she didn't get much more out of it but uh it was her basically testing the waters of her powers and you know because all she did at that point was just make a mask out of i don't know exactly what it was i thought it was like just pure energy or something that she just created out of yeah i'm not sure out of air because she was just laying in bed doing something with her hands and it's like a small pink tube, and then next thing you know, it turns into a mask, and she puts it on her face. But then she just puts on a hoodie and goes out and about. But I, I just like her gumption, her attitude. But it also reflects what she didn't when she didn't listen to Brandyworth about not using her powers, and she just kept using her powers, and literally it's like put a mark on her head from the government, and that's how they were able to trace her. No, oh, because, well, one, she feels she has this higher calling that her life, you know, her life was kind of miserable. I think her mom still did the best she could to love her. Yeah. Um. But she felt she had this higher calling, and it turns out she had the <laughs> kind of every teenager's dream of, oh, I don't want these to be my parents. Oh, look, they're not. Yeah, and then she realizes that they're not. And then uh, the whole backstory of Brandyworth explaining to how and you could see that there was a love from him to her real mother her birth mother yeah. uh, I, I kind of got that out of the story and then how he didn't want that for her either to be growing up in a lab and it, I mean he was breaking them out like he scheduled that lizard group to come to be the distraction so that he could get her out. And then she went into labor and kind of kind of messed it up, messed it up. But and it then, seems like yeah. she, it seems like she would have died in childbirth anyway. So this was the easier way to get the government off her trail. Yeah. Just to hide the death. And it's not, and it's not something that hasn't been done before in comics or, or even in like a superior story arc, it's been done before. Yeah. So it, to me, it's, um, it's an interesting trope, but it does suit the purpose for her character and her development, I think. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as, as much of a quote unquote bratty teenager as she was, she was still a good person at heart, which was like, she was trying to help people. She was trying to do the right thing. Um, when she found out she had siblings as gross as they are, she still ended up standing up for them. Yeah. Um, I like her first big battle though with <laughs> Kill Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it was while she was trying to find Brandyworth himself, she was going from homeless shelter to homeless shelter, flying all around and marking them off on a map. And then she hears the the alarm coming from a jewelry store, and, and um Kill Cannon was out there. And he uh, was robbing, and so she tries to stop him, and uh, it 
you know, that's when she actually, you could see she actually has her, her costume, I think, at this point. She created her own costume. Yeah. And she gives her own superhero name. But in the end, she does meet up with Brandyworth, and that's when he literally goes over her history and her mother and what had happened, explaining to why he did what he had to do and what happened to her mother, uh, that he didn't know who the father was. She just came in, and she was a test subject. And then he got to know and explained to her what was done to her mother and how she was able to get all these powers. So, and then uh, later on, which we do see because uh, obviously Erickson has hired in a new doctor and doesn't know how to recreate the same kind of experiment and sends out these mutant kids. And doesn't put the same. I can't the robot rules into yeah literally the rules of not uh, changing living organic matter uh, and that's why he he Brandyworth had done that so that way there was kind of uh, not doing something it's kind of a horrific kind of thing to do to another person or even yourself I guess and he kind of infused that but the new doctor didn't pay attention to those rules but they were uh, like well, I said, I don't, I don't know that the government knew that um, Elias had put that into her. Oh, uh, okay. Like I think he, because he said, you know, he said, like I'm not a monster, so I put, you know, I made sure, you know, I knew what I was doing or whatever. Yeah. But I'm not sure he told the government he was doing that. I think it was like a, a check and balance he put in there himself, because he want. I mean. He wanted if limitations. You wanted, yeah. If you want to use superheroes as weapons, as the government, you want to use them against, you know, in war against people. So yeah. that I, that feels like a dumb rule for the Pentagon to put in place, a very smart mo- rule for Elias. But yeah, it's not something I don't think the government would be down with that. No, no I the, the government just wants something to kill. And use it for a militarized weapon, and not even looking at the the person as being a person. And I think a lot of that had to do with Brandyworth and how he felt about her and wanting to do that for her to give her uh, a life, uh, kind of like a balance. If you think about it, and, you know, balance of like doing good for others and not killing. And but she finds out during his fight about this whole situation she finds out they're siblings Mm -hmm. in some ways we don't really see the total truth till we get back to the lab oh yeah but uh she finds out because they're falling apart themselves that's something that was going on which the new doctor couldn't really fix or resolve they can only stay out of their tube for so long one was able to learn how to speak and communicate while the other three did not and you know, they kept saying that we're your brothers or whatever siblings. Sibling, and, yeah. And then they, they, and they were just so grotesque. Yeah. And they, they would just morph their hands, utilize all these, uh, abilities while well, during the fight. Now, mind you, the coolest fight I've ever seen so far within the show, which is really interesting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, it's funny how the mutants both, they, they really couldn't handle her. She was coming up with creative means of like trying to stop them. Now, mind you, lassoing the engine and smashing it on one of them, uh, creating a mace at one point, lassoing yeah. it like a mace and just smashing it down, uh, and then creating her own body armor at one point too, over her over her costume. And I thought those were really really cool because they were more creative and yeah uh, she is insanely smart yeah and it's kind of like the green lantern effect (laughs) instead of using a ring you just she's like taking this from her own mind and her thoughts and just creating it with her powers and i really think that's idealistic uh it's really cool uh they i just the one thing that i acknowledge too and she did acknowledge during the fight was that they were causing more destruction and putting other people in harm's way. So she was actually doing the right thing of trying to protect people 
during that time she kind of created like a bumper on herself as cars yeah. were going over and then she was trying to stop and help the people during that fight whereas the mutants they just didn't care they were just out for what their job was supposed to be which was to stop her and kill her and then in doing so they wind up losing their lives too because they wouldn't have even lasted if they were out there like another hour or two longer they would have been dying anyway exactly so it's a sad thing and then when they get back they uh you know, we, they get back to the lab and then that's where everything unfolds. I thought that was pretty cool because they have Brandy work there. They took him mm -hmm. and uh, she winds up going there and there's a the whole fight ensuing. Uh, I don't know if Erickson lost his memory at one point. <laughs> right. <laughs> because it seemed to me like he couldn't figure out. I was like, what am I doing here? So I don't know if he has brain damage or something from that, but I have no clue. Maybe it's something that he got concussed to the point where he couldn't remember. But yeah, during that fight and that whole altercation, she learns that they had her mother. And in Erickson, in his attempt to keep her at bay, releases her mother from the, the tube container which she, li she's literally brain dead. Yeah, she was just a a vessel, birthing unit. a birthing vessel. Yeah, they, that's how they created her siblings, and that's what we find out, which is so terrible. Because it's honestly, it, uh, if you think about it, it's objectifying a woman for what she can do yeah. with her body, and that's just horrific in itself. Uh, and then on top of that, her mother dies in her arms. And then uh, she gets at least the better end of the whole situation by stopping Erickson and then leaves and is able to go home. But overall, her reflection is when she does get home, she is literally just up so upset because she lost her mother lost her siblings as well as Brandyworth. Yep. And she has, you know, and what she thought was uh, what she thinks deep down is her real family because seeing how her mother and father, well, mostly her father treat her. Yeah. And then she takes that, that picture of the three of them, her adoptive parents, and then changes it over to you could see brandy worth you could see her real mother and the siblings but they're not mutants they're yeah regular. that was so cute that was i think phase two would have loved that yeah so i thought that was really really good and overall i thought it was a good ending and overall story uh, about adam eve herself and the fact that her mom her adopted mom the mom she's had for her life does come to the door to help her and be there for her like she's not yes she lost that family yes it's terribly sad but she is not completely alone like she does still have a mom she's got a comforting mother at home even yeah. though her father's a complete mm -hmm. asshole her mom might make <laughs> terrible sandwiches but she can fix that <laughs> uh yeah i don't know if that kid actually likes those sandwiches i wouldn't uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids eat weird things. They do. They do. That is true. But um, yeah, that that's all I had when it came to the actual episode. Obviously, I think I broke down. We broke down like a whole hour episode in less than a half hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of it's fight scenes. So unless you're going through every punch, you're going <laughs> to. Exactly. But uh, the fight scenes were very good. And I did enjoy really them. were really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the funny thing is with the guys, the, the robbers for the dogs. She converts their masks from fabric to they're like rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny and cool. But yeah, and I just love the the whole heart heart wrenching part of it too. It's like it, it shows that even a cartoon like this or animated show could actually pull those heartstrings and then yeah. make you feel for the character itself. So uh, to me, I, I think a lot of that, and we've already, when we covered Invincible season one, it was very much the same thing with Mark's struggle with his own father. 
and we we get like a precursor to that because we get obviously at the very end we get Omni Man coming back and he sees his wife and she goes oh how was today oh nothing much and blah 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 and the talk about how Mark hasn't gotten his powers yet well yeah I mean yeah that made a big deal about and you could see the look on Omni Man's face too it's like yeah. this is the way uh the way that um sandra oh or debbie grayson states that oh well you know if he doesn't get his powers then he doesn't get his powers and he's our son and the look on omni man's face as that, he's oof. That, oof, that horrendous look of like that cannot happen yeah because that's what his point was there it was to procreate and create another viltramite like from that alien race and then yeah. they were to destroy that earth or that planet because that's what they are sent out to do um but yeah i yeah that ending scene was kind of creepy but obviously it's prepping us for season two right because season one started out with us thinking hey what a cute little daddy father son team and then oh at the very <laughs> end it's a blood bath yeah especially when he shoves mark's face all the way through all these train cars smashing into people oh, and blood God. splattering if we all remember that. I don't uh, know how you could forget that. I couldn't forget that. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's all I had for uh, top thoughts and, and notes that I had, uh, you know, because, you know, I, I kind of interwove what I had. But if you had any other notes that you wanted to bring up, uh, we could do that. Yeah, no, I think I mean, I think we talked about basically the whole episode. We hit all the big points. Um, mm -hmm. I loved I loved when she had her costume and um, he was like, that's a cute name. And she's like, no, the cape is cute. The name is, the name is great or the name is awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you stand up for yourself. Like, I just, I love her character. I've always loved her character. I think she's the most caring of all the, of all the characters we've met in this show. Mm-hmm. She's the most genuine. She knows who she is. She's true to who she is. Yeah. And um, it's just this episode, this show proved it. Yeah, it did. I, um, it's just, I loved it. Uh, I love that scene. That was, I think that was my favorite little tiny little moment where that little quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have one from the robbers for the dogs, which is so funny. He goes, dude, I think that's a Powerpuff girl. <laughs> yeah. I cracked up with that one. <laughs> and that would have been right about the time when the Powerpuff girls were popular or had just stopped being popular. Probably. Uh, the one thing called that she gets from, um, what's his name? kill cannon <laughs> she goes nice so patch bro it makes it extra punchable <laughs> <laughs> mind you she gets the really bad end of the stick when she has to fight her uh, mutant siblings because she was really a bloody mess Ooh, i was waiting yeah. literally for her to fly back home and still have her face all puffy and bloody from the battle but we we didn't see that apparently she was able to heal up fast. I don't know, but or just TV magic a little bit. TV magic, probably. <laughs> We're not going to look at it too hard. Nah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, uh, I think that's our coverage for this particular episode. So uh, I think uh, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited for the new season. This was a good. This is a good little little appetizer before we got to it yeah all right so um yeah i didn't advertise this ladies and gentlemen that are out there listening sorry i didn't put this out because it was kind of soon uh yeah and of all things we have yet to actually record for secret invasions episode uh i think five and six <laughs> so we're gonna do them combined this week as well so this I one still will haven't watched come that out. so yeah, this episode will be out before we actually do that. Uh, it's just a matter of scheduling. We've had issues. Uh, Steve couldn't make it one night, and, and he wasn't feeling up to it, and that was fine. Rob just got his job back, so he's been having a hard time. We haven't even recorded for, uh, of all things, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition yet, and we were supposed to do uh, a Star Wars movie that we could fix. 
and I'm forgetting which one because I didn't do my homework yet. <laughs> so that tells you uh, we, we I think we postponed it for this Thursday. But uh, to give a little bit of of uh, podcast love out there in the podcast world, uh, things that we're listening to are friends that are out there that are podcasting. Well, the cast of us, uh, which is the uh, formerly the Walking Dead cast, but is the cast of us for The Last of Us. But they continue on doing, um, uh, they just finished up with Dead City. So they uh, covered Dead City, which was Domus Mo, episode six, but just out today, they covered Barbie. Which I haven't seen yet. I only uh, saw the Oppenheimer part of Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer? <laughs> I, I, I have not seen either yet. That I'm actually very interested in Oppenheimer. I think I'll check out Barbie when it comes to streaming. I'm not really going to rush out to the theater I to go see didn't, it. I had no interest in Barbie. I For everybody who was excited about I was just never a Barbie kid. Yeah. For everybody who was excited about it, I was very happy for them. I just had no interest in it. And then watching other movies, I was seeing like the trailers and stuff. And I'm like, this actually looks fun. So... <laughs> I might. That's the only reason why I would I go watch it. it on on streaming. Uh, to me, it, I, I'm I'm pretty sure there's gonna have those like you know Ken doll <laughs> references, like how they have no, they're not anatomically correct or something like that. It's gonna come up. I think yeah. the creator, somebody represents the creator of Barbie in the, in the movie itself as well. Yeah, from what I've heard, there's like a section where they're in Barbie Land where they're being played with by kids. Okay. So they're. It's acting. kind of like a and Lego she, movie. <laughs> yeah, and then she ends up in the real world. Ah, okay. That's pretty so cool. yeah, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm gonna watch it. I just Oppenheimer was what I watched because that one was more intriguing and I loved it. So yep. that's my recommendation is go see it if you got a chance. I, I believe that Ben and Kristen will be covering that, I'm thinking, but it's gonna be a uh Wilhelm and podcast combination because they're going to do barbenheimer yes whatever it is so um, yeah barbenheimer is the going to see both of, i love how many people went to see both of them this past weekend like it's just awesome well but, and i live by a movie theater <laughs> and we drove past it a few times this weekend and every time we drove past there were people like all decked out in pink like i know what they're going to see i saw a lot of that because where i work where I work at a uh, big box store and I do all the retail. So like I do the in-home services, but when we got back with the truck and my buddy's like, what are they all seeing? I said, probably Barbie and Oppenheimer. I, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like mo people are getting dressed up for movies. Like that's a cool thing. That's, I, a, I, that's I, like, let's cosplay. But when we go see this movie, it's like when it's, people bring their lightsabers to a star Wars movie at yeah, times. I you love know? it. It's fun. Uh, to give out a little bit more for podcast to love, uh, run for your lives. They just covered the blob from 1988. Guess what? We didn't go to again this year. Yes. Blob fest, but I was out too. Actually, uh, during that time I realized it's like, that was like the last week I was out with uh, workman's comp. So I could, physically, I wouldn't, wasn't able to, I was going to doctors. It sucked. Yeah. I was doing my light, my lightsaber guild stuff that weekend. So I wasn't home either. Nah. Well, it, 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 what would <laughs> what would uh, kill a, not kill a frost? Oh, I, I it's like make a plan, execute a plan, and then throw out the plan half the <laughs> throw. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll try again next year. That would be a, a Captain Cold reference to everybody from uh, the CW, The Flash, <laughs> from my, one of my favorite actors out there, to Wentworth Miller. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you could actually check out uh, Daphne and Paik and, and their coverage for The Blob for 1988. So that that's something to, to look out for. Uh, TV Podcast Industries will be covering just the same as us with uh, Secret Invasion, as well as adam eve so if you want to get another different perspective view of the uh the episode or the prequel do so check them out they're very good i love what derek and his crew have to say and think about the same stuff that we do and uh well and you you know this is where i like to say where else could listeners hear us 
So, Jamie, obviously, we did season two, uh, season one of Invincible. We did mm-hmm. this right now. Uh, we are going to be covering because it was in production. I don't know if they finished. What is the other thing that we have done for Podcastica? We have done Sandman. And there's images up. Oh, they were filming. filming. They were filming season two when the writer's strike started. So, yep. I think we're going to be uh, postponed on that one. Yeah, but we will be back for that. But you could also hear Jamie on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, where you also could hear me. Uh, we covered Big Trouble in Little China. That will be out, obviously, by the time this comes out or before, because I'm in the middle of editing it right now. So you'll have that in your ears. But uh, I owe it to Jamie that we have to do another movie. So we're probably going to do a Friday the 13th film or whatever she chooses. So we'll come yeah, up with something. Yeah, I think about what so, I want to do. So uh, you could also hear there on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, as well as, like like we said, Sandman Cast. So if you haven't watched Netflix's Sandman, do, do so. it. It's so and, good. And then just listen to our podcast on podcast. And you can check it out there. Uh, like I said, you could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast as well, or on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition when uh, more material comes out. Uh, plus, uh, every once in a while, when I make an appearance on podcast, go with whatever <laughs> when I'm asked, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty cool. Pop in, I'll show up places where I'm asked too. Yep. Nobody's been asking me recently except you, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're a mommy. You have a lot to do too. So, and, and trying to find the time to do this is hard, and I understand that. But that's always fun. I always like doing it. Yeah. But, well, news wise, San Diego Comic Con just came and went. Uh, if you guys or listeners haven't checked it out, they have numerous amounts of YouTubers that went there to follow around, uh, based upon the SAG AFTRA and the, the Writers Guild strikes that are going on. Uh, actors are, are not allowed to go. Only specific, uh, authorized, uh, I guess panels were allowed, but not many were there for, um, for media when it came to that. But, I think San Diego actually turned back to its roots and a lot of the uh, comic artists and writers were spotlighted this year. And uh, I got to watch a lot of it online and I was very happy with some of the panels I got to watch of what's coming out and and Marvel image, all that good stuff Uh, of all people that were able to show their movie was somebody that uh, I'm hoping to see at the end of August for my birthday. And that would be, Kevin Smith and Mark Menarden, but Mark Menarden was able to play his independent film Splinter. I've seen you sag. Yep. Yeah. The, and uh, Trisha Helfer was there to help him out. Uh, David Das Malkian was there to moderate said panel and watch. Uh, it was a full house. I got to see it privately at Smod Castle Cinemas. Which nice. I, so I got to see that one night when I went to go see Fat Man Beyond. And I was tweeting out to Kevin Smith because my birthday's at the end of August. And I'm like, what do I want to do? Which show should I go to? And he didn't get back to me. So I made a decision. So I'm going to go see the taping of Fat Man Beyond at Smod Castle Cinemas. And, nice. I get, and I get a message after that. And he goes, well, there's also something else, Mark. That you could watch after Fat Man on Batman, uh, Fat Man Beyond, not Fat Man on Batman anymore. But he stated uh, in a in a direct message saying, "You can watch the Schumacher cut of Ooh. Batman Forever." <laughs> so he got a copy of it. So he's he's playing it that night after Fat Man Beyond. Oh, that's so, cool. So that's a nice good birthday gift. But I'm not sure if I really want to see that many bat nipples. <laughs> on me on <laughs> in the theater, but I was told there's a lot. There's like a, like what, almost 12 minutes of extra footage that we've never seen before, and I don't know if it would make it movie any better. But I'm curious, so yeah. I'll, I'll stay the extra uh, couple of hours to watch that that night. Um, he he did suggest that I stay and hang around the next day to watch Keep On and Curry On. Uh, keep calm and carry on which is uh what mark's going to be hosting the following night but 
our friend Ben Beck would love it for the fact that they're going to be playing Clue in the theater. Oh, I love Clue. And then Legend, both Ooh. featuring Tim Curry. Uh, and that's it's the funniest thing, because that's why they say keep calm and carry on. So it's all about uh, Tim Curry movies, but they couldn't really figure out a third movie. I said I made the joke. How could they not figure out a third movie they with Tim did, Curry? They did, but they refused to play Home Alone 2. Oh, God. <laughs> I, we, were all we were all chanting. It's like, oh, Home Alone 2. He goes, yeah, we don't want to do that because of that one guy that's in it. I was like, that's Rocky fair. Horror. Yeah, Rocky Horror. There, there's uh, so it? many. It well, it, that well, was a mini gonna series. A That's gonna take a bit longer, but <laughs> well, not that Kevin hasn't done that before. He's done an all nighter at the that cinema, right? Yeah, he did a whole night of clerks, but uh, yeah, that's a cheap pop and plug for uh, Smodcastle Cinemas out there, uh, to you. Uh, if you want to check, they are playing older movies. Uh, a lot of the new movies, you know, obviously, Flash got pulled after like two weeks, so uh with the event advent of like the strikes and everything else, whatever movies that are coming out, they'll still play, but they have these special events where you could see older movies. And apparently that's very popular. A lot of people want to see these older movies in these, these theaters. And, yeah. uh, and when you get a, like a cool commentary at the very end or panel that Kevin likes to do, or Mark likes to do, or whoever, you know, I, I hear that he's going to be doing chasing Amy at a later point and have Joey Lord and Adams there. So, uh, you know, he has these special events. So all you have to do is go to smodcastlecinemas.com, check out their schedule. Uh, be keep in mind the specific ones that are clerks related or view a universe related with special guests will sell out fast. Yeah. So, so get your tickets while they're last. So, uh, that's a cheap plug for, uh, Kevin and Ernie O'Donnell out there for smart castle cinemas uh, and i will say if even if you've seen a movie a hundred times if you've never seen it on the big screen it just hits different like i did a a bruce campbell thing and they played evil dead at the end on the and i'd never seen evil dead on the big screen and it just hits entirely differently and i've seen that movie a hundred times yeah and you're there also with an audience too yeah so you get the feel of being with the audience and then embracing the movie like you've never done before because usually you're at home your, your family or by yourself, like me, just, you just watch the movie over and over again. And you could just quote it and then you don't have somebody tapping and going, Hey, stop it. Stop, <laughs> stop uh, saying the dialogue as it's happening. Um, but yeah, it, it's a cool thing. And I, I suggest that. And obviously go out there and support the theaters too, because obviously, you know, they need to make money as well. I'm not talking about the, film business i'm not talking of big corporations i'm talking about the actual theater owners and everybody they they still need to be in business because they got hit hard during the pandemic but yeah we had a lot we had a few theaters around here closed down yeah so it's kind of hard they actually of all things jamie they closed down the hyde park drive-in no yes i know that you were lived in that area and you've gone there probably yeah. so many times they they had to close it nobody did uh the the owners that took over overlook which you know it was the same family that owned overlook drive-in and hyde park drive-in i guess they didn't want to put in the bid because it, it's part of the township and they're gonna tear it down and use it for something because nobody wanted to purchase it oh that's even sad. though hyde park is uh, was a smaller drive-in but it was the original driving in that area. So it's sad to go. I've seen so many movies there and I have good memories of, of seeing that. Yeah. But the drive in I grew up with is now a quick check, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that this is the time of the year where drive-ins come, you know, it's very important and you get to have fun. You could have a barbecue and make it a day event Yeah. before the actual movie theater. So uh, I highly recommend drive-ins out there. Um, before we end this, I just want to let everybody know how to submit your feedback so we can be heard on Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. If ratings are available, please do so give us a rating or review. Uh, 
preferably Apple Podcasts because that's the most highly regarded one. And a lot of people use that for their search. So if you could do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you could go to our Facebook group. Usually I post something, an image with saying, <laughs> please put your comment down below. For this one, I didn't do that. Secret Invasion, I'll be doing that tonight before I go to bed it's because it's coming out tomorrow, Wednesday. So uh, we will be definitely be recording this weekend, probably Friday or Saturday. Uh, we'll have that up. So, the, you know, the two episodes. So we're going to get five and six out to you. Uh, five was actually a shorter episode. So that it, we'll just we'll do one big one, one big episode and comment about it because it flows right into six from what I'm told. So basically, all you have to do is go to our Facebook uh, Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter. I have to link them. So when it's I actually X, it's not Twitter anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. You want to switch it to X. Well, all right. <laughs> Interesting. I did not know. And I'm in the know. So you could check us out on X. <laughs> and, and it's at panels to pixels panels the number two in pixels uh you can email us that's the best way to do it honestly you just email send out a regular texted email to us and you could send that to panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels two is spelled out to you pixels and the number one at gmail.com just write out your thoughts we'll you know we'll read them on the podcast doesn't necessarily have to be about this particular episode or uh, anything that's coming up, or it could be something from the past that we've covered before. Yep. Just uh, tell us what you thought and, you know, we'll read them and we'll comment about it. Or if you really like, you could easily record yourself. We have the, all these cool devices now. There's smartphones and things of that nature. You just record yourself. And then with that, you could just add it as an attachment. We could pop it into the podcast as we're recording and comment as we go along. So you could also be part of the podcast. Uh, we've been getting a lot of views on YouTube. So a lot of people are utilizing that. I put it as a, a podcast playlist. So that's been get, getting seen more and more. So awesome. all you have, yeah, so all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. While you're there, subscribe if you like what's going on. We occasionally do interviews, so you could actually see my ugly mug and then whoever I'm interviewing, and we could talk, and then you see a video uh, whenever we do that. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, give us the thumbs up on the, the, the ver you know, whatever episode that you liked. And then uh, hit the bell to uh, be alerted for anything uh, that, that's coming up. Like I said, the flash came out, so we were kind of... I dropped it right around the time that it came out on streaming so it's perfect so if you didn't go to the theater you could easily get that on voodoo i think you could get it on um itunes as well and uh it'll be out on blu-ray at the end of the week i believe it's uh august 29th it's coming out so uh, uh, not august 29th july 29th sorry no oh, well that's much sooner than august <laughs> that 29th. is much sooner yeah no <laughs> guardians of the galaxy is actually coming out i believe at the end of august on on blu-ray too so but that's so good yeah that was so good but yeah you could check us out on youtube and go there and then uh actually leave comments we've gotten comments before we can be found on instagram at panels to pixels podcast spelled out completely so <laughs> there you go now it's time for you to get threads Round it all out. Yeah, well, I I need to do a lot of links. To come, I I because I know with uh, Instagram and Facebook, you can link it. So when you drop it on one, you does in both. Threads I, should I think Threads does the same because Threads is part of Instagram. Yeah, I have to do that, and uh, I have to deal with this whole meta thing. One day I'll have it all set up. Uh, Steve at one point was in control of uh, Instagram, but. I, I realized with the uh, Adrenaline Cinema podcast, I was like, oh, wait, they're connected. And it drops <laughs> it on both. I don't have, it's like one stop shop. Now, nice. if only that could work with X, but I don't think it's going to work. But I no. know a lot of friends and a lot of celebrities that are out there are dropping X or formerly the Twitter. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll keep that up because I don't really get that much. Not many people yeah. view it. So we might just, dismiss that and then keep things as they are so but 
with that, that's that's our episode. And I just want to thank Jamie for being on. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'd like to thank all the listeners out there who are listening. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And this was <laughs> Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. I'm Mark. I'm Jamie. Good night. Good night. <laughs> and I think I did that backwards, but who cares? What's whatever. All right, we're leaving that in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>